Hello, my sweet peaches and my sour mangoes, all of you delicious fruits that are out, out there listening. Thank you so much for joining. It's Stefan from a comedy advice podcast, fresh out of the shower. And guess what, guys? Now I'm jumping into this tub of an episode and just running that water as warm as you'd like. So you can just sit back, relax, and soak up all this goodness with special guest, Joe Dombrowski. He is an incredible person, just hilarious through and through, inside and out. I think he got the x-ray and the doctors were like, yeah, you're 100% funny. That's just how it is. The 23 and me came back and they were just like, you are like 1% Scandinavian, 99% funny. So he is absolutely hilarious. He's such a cool guy too. Very interesting. He talks a little bit about how he blew up. I mean, not literally, but uh, on the internet went viral because of the April Fool's prank in 2017, where he did a spelling bee for his kids. Yes, he is a teacher and a great one at that. He's still teaching, even though he's going on tour nationwide. And um, anyway, that that viral video got him on Ellen and Ellen shared some words with him that were quite inspiring that's on the episode. So you guys got to listen to the full thing because Stefan's not going to spill any more secrets. Mm -mm, nope. I am not going to, the tea is in the cup and it's going to, you, you're just going to have to sip on it. Okay. As you listen to the episode. So other than that, follow Joe, go see him live, show him some support because he's an excellent human being and he deserves all that love. And guess what? I'm going to say I do too. Yeah. And so follow me, go see me live September 8th, house of comedy, new show, trash or treasure, where I'm bringing on comedians. I'm going to give them a topic and they're going to have to debate whether it's trash or treasure winner advances to the next round loser goes home, sucking their thumb. So it's, it is kindergartners, by the way, I'm also a teacher. No, I'm not. I retired from that. I threw in, gave my badge and my ruler and apple. So now I'm just comedy podcaster, but you know, other than that, follow me on the gram and where else are you going to follow me? How can you show your support? Think about it long and hard. Look and reflect on those show notes, subscribe, leave a review, all that good stuff. Just cookies. I love cookies. So if you want to send those to send them on over, daddy loves cookies. I'm daddy, by the way, I did, it, just in case. You didn't know that. But anyway, guys, I love you so much. And thank you. And you're going to listen to the episode now. Here we go. Hey. Hey, Joe. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Okay, actually, I'm not great. I'm a little hungover. I never, ever go out drinking after shows. And last night I did. And I'm like, what am I doing in my life? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, but I can rally. I'm, I can rally. We're good. That that's great. What was your drink of choice last night? Uh, I'm a dirty martini person, so Grey Goose, dirty martini, dirty olives is my thing. But they made it disgusting last night. It was way too dirty. I'm like, am I drinking salt? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> you see him in the bag just pouring salt in there. Ugh. Literally, literally. So if I'm chugging water during this interview, we're just gonna roll with it. <laughs> oh hey, no worries, no worries. I'm chugging water myself. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona, so I think it's a requirement. You just have to be chugging water constantly and i can't wait to get down there with you guys i know i'm so excited i was going to ask if you were feeling better from the covid maybe not the hangover but it, it, you look 100 percent. yeah yeah that was a wild ride god oh man oh, you know man. what the thing is too is it's this is my personal journey so anybody listening like it might not be your personal journey Right. way fucking worse than oh do we swear on this podcast we can yes we can. <laughs> okay um <laughs> way worse than what they said tell you on the news they're like if you're vaccinated it's gonna be like the sniffles and you might like get a wee little headache girl i was done i was sweating in my bed in a pool of water couldn't get up to go to the bathroom i was knocked on my ass and i am oh. vaccinated i was like jesus christ Oh no. Oh, that's, and did you have to quarantine in Oklahoma? Oh, worse. Omaha. What's in Omaha? Oh, oh my God. I had a beautiful view of a cornfield, and that was about it. A Walmart, and, uh, and that's it. 
Oh my gosh, that's like what I would imagine as the Omaha mural, like what they're the <laughs> yes. <most> proud of. <laughs> yes, yes, 100%. <laughs> but I do have oh. to tell you, though, I did some amazing writing. I wrote some fantastic new jokes that I did for the first time last night that really hit. And I wrote them all when I was just bored as hell in quarantine. Oh, that's oh, good. I'm glad it was a little productive because I was just thinking about it before the show, before we started talking. And I was like, man, it sounds like something that I would explain to one of my friends as a bad dream that I had being like, I, I just I woke up, but I was dreaming that I got COVID. I was in Omaha and I had to stare at corn <laughs> and a Walmart. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. And I got it bad. Yep. Mm hmm. Oh, no. Oh, man. Well, I'm glad you're better. I'm glad you're out there. I'm glad you're on this podcast, which is, by the way, a comedy advice podcast. I am Stefan Satani. And joining me today, for all of you listeners who have not pinpointed that amazing voice, that charismatic <laughs> voice, that energetic voice, even though he had so many dry, dirty martinis, Joe Dombrowski, everybody. Clap, clap, See, the, clap. clap this clap, voice, clap. though, right now, I feel like I sound like an 87 year old sailor <laughs> who has been smoking since he was 12 he's he's gay obviously and he just had like a really rough night out with his girls and he lived his life and now he's back on the ship and his voice is just this <laughs> you know, it I does do it does bring me back a little bit. I thought you were about to to narrate some stories about how you stormed Omaha Beach in uh, World War II. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know what, Joe? I like you, too. And so do so many other people. And uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about you before we get into the advice portion where we've got some segments. We're going to talk about inspirational quotes. We're going to answer some questions from random people that posted them on the Internet, uh, amongst other things. But you are just such a stellar personality, such a great person. Everything that I see or hear you on, I th you know, your podcast, Social Studies, a gem of a podcast, by the oh, way. Thank you. And, and I think that... Beyond the content of it, I feel like if there were to be, and I think there probably should be sometime soon, a major in college in podcasting, where mm -hmm. if they dissect a podcast, like a, a less gory frog dissection, but they're going through and they're saying, okay, let's open this baby up and look at the intro. Here's how you do a plug. Here's how you stay full of energy. And I think you might be a model example for that. Oh, cause... wow. That's big words, Stefan. Damn, dude. Um, <laughs> you know, the truth behind that, though, is that I... And this goes for every walk of life. I've always said this to myself, and I think it's why I'm successful. It's because I mm -hmm. am 100% authentically me in everything that you see. Like what you hear on the podcast is me right before I go to bed. Like what you see in my videos is me when I'm at work. Like it's just when I'm at doing my emails and all that, I'm just a very energetic, riddled with ADHD, you know, delinquent <laughs> that's just who i am <laughs> and it's you know i think just to pause right there to stop at that stoplight and just say i think a lot of people are afraid of being their true authentic self and i feel like yeah. you're such a good example of shining through whether you're reading a manscaped ad or whether you're um telling jokes on stage i feel like you are your true authentic self and it shines so so it's refreshing to be honest Thanks. with you well, nobody can yeah. do you better than you, you know, and every I think that every single person, no matter how boring or fun, if you would claim that every person has unique qualities about them. And there is no better feeling in this world than being able to capitalize on just who you are. It's the best. I am just me. And it's working. <laughs> and it's great. And I love my life. Oh, man, that's so good to hear because, you know, sometimes people come in here and they're like, I hate my life. It's horrible. So it's good to have the flip side of it. And yeah, you're you're hung over on top of that. So I mean, Very, this... extremely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I also wanted to talk about I, you're an incredible teacher. On social studies, I, I think one of the last episodes you had talked with somebody that helps prepare material 
for mm-hmm. kindergarten through maybe third grade. So you talk about that in in your podcast. You also have episodes where you and your mom get together and you guys watch shows recommended by your Patreon fans. But for some examples, Top Chef, Sexy oh, yeah. Beasts, yeah, and uh, some some other true gems there. Um, so I was going to say, though, teaching, also comedy, you kind of started those at the same time. Is that correct? Around the same time. I've actually been doing comedy okay. one year longer than teaching. So I'm now in my 12th okay. year as a comic uh, and 11 years of teaching. Um, I don't teach full time anymore. I stepped away from that because, yes. you, know, you know, I was even a stand-up comic for my third grade talent show when I was in third grade. So this has always been the goal, the, the dream, the goal. And now that I'm conquering that, yeah. the truth behind it is that I still very much love teaching. It is fun. I could never have a job where it's the same every day and teaching will always keep you on the toes. I feel like I, that's where my ADHD thrives. So I did scale back and now I, I sub three days a week mm-hmm. so I can still tour Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep. That is so cool that you're doing that. And that's so cool for all the parents of which are their children are being taught by you because is I... Uh, but but I uh, I have to admit, actually, a, a lot of the listeners don't know this about me. I speak Italian, and I was going to be an Italian teacher. Oh. I taught for two years as an after-school program at one of the elementary schools near my university. Which is and clearly a private school, a very bougie private school. It was It was a uh, public school, public elementary school. With an school. Italian teacher... <laughs> an well, Italian t- tutor at that. <laughs> well, they they gave a uh, the Italian government gave a grant to try and introduce Italian as a second language. So it was an experimental type thing. It didn't work. Spoiler alert. It was uh, oh, Mamma Mia, uh, a bad mm-hmm. a bad thing. Wow! Wow! That's amazing. It you was. Know, I, I am half Italian, and the Italian side of my family is like very Italian. Like I can show you where I got hit with the wooden spoon if I need to prove it. Oh, I've got the marks too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's, that's hilarious. I, yeah, I, um, I'm also, even though I look incredibly German or some sort of white blend, uh, Italian as well. And, um, I, I lived over there, studied abroad. I wanted to teach it. And then I ended up not because it it was such a there were 60 students I didn't really know how to teach uh, I didn't have any preparation so I went in there uh you know with 60 students that it was after school and they were ready to just play and have fun and I think I could have had them have fun while teaching them but I didn't have the tools necessary I didn't have your podcast or you Joe to be able to help guide me so I ended up not (laughs) taking that route Full stop. Let me tell you this, though. (laughs) The brand of me and what I do, because I do talk a lot about teaching and like what happens in the classroom and how I am a teacher. I always tell people, yo, 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 because I have people come to me all the time. They're asking for advice. They're asking for help in the classroom. And I'm over here like, hold on. The brand is hot mess express never know what i'm doing i'm just you know it happens to be working but i'm really just shooting at the hip so i tell people oh you want to learn from me well how about you just watch and learn what not to do because i don't have a damn clue what's even going on today baby i don't know this kid just bit me i have to go get my rabies shot on my lunch break all right just oh no don't come to me seeking out like grade a advice to get a raise because you're not gonna get it oh my gosh well that that maybe maybe i was better off then we'll see but uh (laughs) yeah and you know you were you were uh you were going down a road of poverty so (laughs) you've you may have helped yourself in the long run that that is fair and you know what my mom the only person that was really disappointed was my mom because she's a math teacher she's been teaching math for to high school students for I don't know longer than I've been alive 40 years and she was like you couldn't you see what I deal with every day now is this you couldn't handle this is easy yeah yeah and I was like mom sorry 
But anyway, back back to you, Joe. I I, um, I wanted to also talk about you ended up having a 2017 April Fool's prank where you invented some words and had the kids try and spell for a spelling bee. And there were some pretty cool words that you put in there. Like, what was it? Blorsky? Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones. <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> I lost a Blorsky at the carnival. Uh, yeah. Beautiful in a sentence for those of us that that might need some more context. But you ended up doing this whole spelling bee. It was hilarious. All the kids were were uh, probably a little angry that they did so poorly on the test. And then at the very end, April Fools. It was such so clever and so funny. Yeah. And if, uh, if you want a little behind the curtain of that video, I ooh. actually made all those words up on the spot. So what you didn't see in the video is the way that I actually did the spelling test was I gave them the words and I said, write them down. And I didn't say anything else mm -hmm. about them. Then when I turned mm -hmm. on the camera is when we were checking this test. So I had given them the words already and I was checking the test, but I had all the words and I had given them in a sentence and now I had to remember what I said. So, <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. So as I'm like regurgitating it, I'm like, shit, how did I use this in a sentence again? And it just worked. It was magic. It was like, it was Whole, insane. Yeah. Holy hell. That is, yep. that is hilarious. Because there were some, I mean, there were umlaws in there. There were also some silent Hyphens. consonants. Yes, there were many silent consonants. Oh. Tricky. <laughs> that tricky. Was <laughs> oh that was that was so good and it, it was obviously everybody loved it because it blew up it even i i believe you went on ellen several times or the first time was because of the video which yeah is really cool yeah that was the, fun. She, she loved it and and i was gonna say did you i think i had heard this on another interview where you were kind of not highlighting the comic side of you you were kind of coming on as i guess they were angling the story as you were just a teacher is mm -hmm. that so another that? peek behind the curtain yes so oh. oh they when we first went on they were they they knew i was a comic because it's like it's like you're getting into some government program they find everything out about you which i understand because if you go on the show and then like it comes up that you're a problematic person it's probably not the best <laughs> yeah. for them right so <laughs> i go on the show they're like hey we hear we we see your comic we chat about mm -hmm. it and they go okay and this is like mm, 20 minutes before I go on stage they're like okay just so you know this isn't your last comic standing audition like just go out there and be yourself don't try and be funny and in my head I'm like which I just like am you know like I just am I don't know I don't know what you mean don't try and be funny so yeah. um I go I do the show and oh and then they tell me too they're like if Ellen gets up out of her seat to like change your makeup or get a cup of coffee or do whatever it is like don't be offended by that she's working like this is her job so don't take it personally it's like she's got to like get things done before we go back to filming so i expected that to happen mm -hmm. we go i meet her we start filming the cameras go to a commercial and she turns to me and she's like so i heard you're a comic and i'm like yeah i am and she's like you're really funny and i was like oh thank you and she goes no you're really funny you need to do something with that and i was like uh, uh and then the cameras came back on and we continued filming and if you watch the clip back i'm kind of like you can like see in my face i'm like what 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 what, what? <laughs> yeah and i'm like this is insane this is not so what so and then um wow wow went on the show again and some time passed and then Ellen was uh -huh. filming her Netflix special. She filmed it in Seattle, which is where I live currently. And she was filming it mm -hmm. two blocks from my house. So I ended up getting like one of the last tickets and I go to the show. And at the end of the show, they did this like Q and A thing. And she was like gesturing towards me and they handed me the microphone and she goes, the teacher. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and she's like oh my god and she stops and she's like this guy everybody hold you're not gonna believe it she goes tell everybody what you did and like i told them about the test and then i go 
she goes, what, what have you been up to? And I was like, oh, I just want to let you know, I'm actually about to go on my first national tour because you told me I should do something with that. And she was like, that is incredible. She's like, good for you. You deserve it. And I was like, this is insane. This is my life. And that's when I went on my first tour. Oh my God. My heart is overflowing with joy Thank and you. surprise. That is so, that's so cool. It's like God himself is just like you, but what, what are you up to? What are you up? And then you get to, t- <laughs> it's so cool also that you kind of listen to that advice too. It's so cool for somebody so talented. I mean, say what you want about all the controversy and, and et cetera, but I mean, she has successfully had a lot of, um, comedy and and she she knows talent i feel and so being able to pinpoint that and say hey you're really funny you should do something with it and then you do and listen to it and then you guys get to meet at that next path i don't know where you guys are going to meet next i was surprised you didn't meet in omaha she was just like <laughs> just like hey. flew another helicopter <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah the walmart is the landing pad so she just uh it goes literally no but i agree oh, with you God. too i i I actually had idolized her. Even when I was very young, I was in middle yeah. school and I was watching all of her specials on VHS and I, I could mm-hmm. quote it at the time. I was doing her jokes and her bits, not knowing that you shouldn't steal people's jokes at the time. <laughs> but I was using her jokes in like my daily conversation because she was just so funny. So mm-hmm. when you when you respect somebody so much in comedy and then they give you your shot, it's like, holy shit. It was crazy. It's like all of a sudden she's like, would you like a shot at being on the Z list? Here you go. I was like, okay, let's do it. Oh God, that's so cool. And then that is, that is not the only person that gave unexpected compliments to. I was thinking of a principal at one point and it leads me kind of to the question of, how long did you keep the teaching and comedy separate before people started to kind of find out and, um, and and, yeah, discover you? This happened in a crazy way. I, so I, I'm from Detroit originally and I was Mm -hmm. doing comedy and my whole motivation for doing comedy was that I loved it, but also like to it, here's a fact. If you're a teacher, you're probably poor, just how it is. (laughs) So I was, I was, you have to, especially in your first five years of teaching, you have to have a second yeah. job if you're going to do stuff. I need to pay my bills. So I would wake up at four o'clock in the morning and I was a cycle spin instructor. I'd go teach a spin class, go to work, wow. teach another spin class, shower, go to the clubs. And I was just hustling because you have to. Detroit hustles is harder, by the way. But I'm Working, working, working. And my motivation for doing comedy was like, well, if I can do a $20 spot, a $50 spot, maybe a $100 spot if I'm lucky, that's enough to like put gas in my tank for the week, get groceries, pitch in for the potluck or whatever we're doing at work. Like it's helping. So that's why I was doing it. And then uh, I was doing a show and I started realizing that what was working was just telling what happened in school that day. So I would just tell these wild stories about like me and the kids. And I Mm -hmm, started mm -hmm, working some mm -hmm. really great bits about me and the kids. Well, one day I went out to do my set and I looked out and there was a table of parents from my school and I was like, shit. And I told myself, I was like, you can either go with... Um, what you do and what you know because it works or you can switch this up right now and potentially bomb and I was like well it's not worth the bomb because there's still a full house here so like let's just go with what I know Mm. did it good night shit my pants went back (laughs) out and the this these families it was just two couples yeah. waited at the bar of the club for me to walk out. And the way this club is, is you have to walk past the bar to leave. Ooh. And I walked past them and they like grabbed me and they were like, 
oh my God, you're so funny. If you were talking about my kid, I know you were. It's so funny. He's such an asshole. We know. Like, <laughs> like we were just like, they loved it. And I was like, okay, okay. So I'm thinking, oh, escaped that one, right? They yeah. brought more parents the next weekend. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. And they loved it. So then word started to spread and like more family started to come. I was at work like the next over the next few weeks and my staff was starting to be like, you're a comedian, like you do comedy. And I'm like, yeah. Um, <laughs> and now the staff is starting to come. And I'm like, all right. And they, they got a kick out of it. They would do like nights out together and be at my shows. Mm -hmm. And then one day my principal came. And I was like, it's over for you, bud. And after the show, she left right away. I was like, she didn't like it. It's totally fine. And the next day, the following Monday, she came into my classroom as I was sitting at my computer getting ready for the work day, closed the door behind her. And I'm like, I am screwed. And she said, I want you to know that you have a gift and I'll be very disappointed if you don't tackle that you do she's like I thought that was very great creative and very very funny and I want you to know that you have a gift and I was like what I have never saved a kitten out of a tree what what do I do for this karma <laughs> this is like this is insane that people are just and then when she said that is when I really started to double down. I wouldn't say no to a lot of gigs. She was very uh -huh. flexible with me taking time to do gigs. Um, oh. she's, she's like, if you have your shit done, if, you're, if you get your work done and you have the sub plans and you can handle it, I have no problem with you doing it. And that's when I was able to get really good at it. So I, wow. I wasn't scared anymore, you know? Because teaching and comedy don't typically go hand in hand. You have to, if you're a teacher, you have to present yourself in a, a certain type of light, unless you're me, who I just made the brand unfiltered oh. deep there, you know? But yeah, it was incredible. That is very cool. Very inspiring, too, where I, as you were telling the story, there were some, uh, I'm holding my breath and you know. <laughs> uh, just waiting for, oh, almost waiting for the principal to be like, you know, you have some incredible gifts. You should chase them. You've got a lot of time now because you're fired. Right. So it's right. just, it's, it's incredible to see how it worked out like that and, and to see how successful you've become. And it, it's really cool. Really cool. Thank job. you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I never take anything for granted. It's been an awesome journey. Oh, that's incredible. All right. Well, Joe, we're going to wind down with some advice as we get into these segments. So uh, first, before we answer any questions, I like to reflect on some inspirational quotes. So I've got one in my back pocket. But before I present that, I usually like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help uh, help them when they are on their down days. Is this real? Or are you about to pull out a card and you're going to tell me like, don't stand under trees because birds will shit on you like <laughs> oh man you got you got a whiff you got a little bit of a whiff of what's coming up but uh <laughs> okay but my real inspirational quote yes is i always tell people if you dare to compare you will end up in despair because a lot of comics will constantly be comparing themselves to like other people at the clubs. And like I said earlier, no one does you better than you. So don't compare yourself to others and like where they're at, where they're going, just focus on your journey and it will continue to go up. God, beautiful. Joe, that's that's something <laughs> okay. I have to kind of remind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right. Now, now we can go into the crummy quotes. Okay, so I that was beautiful. I also just wanted to add to that. I think it's something that I think about comparing on social media, where I think about either comics or um, people, men that are more muscular than I am, or maybe have more uh, lustrous locks. Yeah, and I just think, oh man, I wish you could be like them. But you know, you. No one can do you better than you. So I'm going to work with this chestnut lock color and, uh, you know, just do what I do. And you, you know what I'll they keep... can't do? They can't speak Italian. Uh, so that's just, true. Yeah. Remember Justo. that. 
Exactly. Oh, you... Baby, <laughs> say it slow, say it slow. <laughs> do, you know what's, do you know what's very funny is, uh, well, it's actually kind of sad, is I thought that this would be a very nice romantic language. And then I ask my wife, you know, what's what kind of language would you like to learn? She's Italian, perhaps. And she's like, yeah. French. I love French. And I'm like, oh, man, okay, well, that's five years down the drain. <laughs> the school that I worked at last year, the kids were learning French, and they had French every Friday with a French teacher. And he was he would teach them over Zoom, and then I would facilitate in the class. But he never didn't speak French. So he would look at me and give me directions to help the kids in French. I'm like, wee oui, wee, oui, motherfucker, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't speak French. Like, cut the shit, like, help me out. And it was a disaster. Their, their work, they would ask me for help. They're like, we don't know what we're doing. I'm like, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> oh, my God. That is hilarious. Oh, yeah. my God. True story. Tell your uh, wife. Yeah, yeah. So, sometimes I will try and, sp well, she's Brazilian. She speaks Portuguese. And that's Ooh, how we you met. You lucked out. I yes, I definitely did. I ended up not being a teacher, so I worked at Rosetta Stone, and then I ended up oh, taking cool. Portuguese. Yeah, and uh, then I learned Portuguese, and then I learned it well enough to try and flirt with my wife, and she thought it was <laughs> a, 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 an adorable disaster. But I ended up swooning her somehow, and then mm. uh, I went to Brazil to try and meet her family, and it was. It was horrible. I made an app. They have a dictionary of all the words that I've made up. Um, I accidentally, she took my, or my, my father-in-law and I went shopping together to bond and he left me with the cart to figure out what was on the list. So I was oh. asking people what these things were because I didn't know what half of them were. And I ended up filling almost the whole cart with everything on the list. And I was like, you know, father-in-law, I got everything except for this and what it was was cornmeal but what i said was buttholes so, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's amazing oh that's amazing i was not expecting that <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. So, so I, I obviously I'm not allowed at the store anymore because I was asking everybody that worked there. I was like, "Do you guys? What oh, aisle do you store your buttholes?" <laughs> <laughs> was this like a like a learn quick thing that he was doing to you? Was he like giving you like a ninja strong hand or something? I think it was because he was like, "I'm gonna go get the meat. You you cover everything else." And he was like, "Let's see how this guy." fares uh, in the supermarket right. is this yeah. right is is this right to follow portuguese is that right ah muito bem very good very good that is so i'll, I'll tell you one thing that's the uh that is correct brazilian so english yeah no well, no no even um uh the pronunciation was good too the uh portuguese from portugal they use the pronoun to or like do oh. more Brazilians, instead of tu, they say você, which I think comes from, because in Argentina, I think in the Spanish, they say vos instead of tu as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it comes from, um, very strange, but I think it comes from slaves giving a more formal title to their, their masters in Brazil and in, in South America. And they would say, a vosa excelencia, which is like your excellence or something. Oh. And then I think it got shortened to... Você. What is um, tudo bem? Oh, tudo bem is just like all good, everything okay? I love it. I love it. I used to date a guy who worked in Brazil. Oh, so okay. Doing all this. That's where I fell in love with those little breads with the cheese in it. Oh, pão de queijo. <laughs> oh, Yum. yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Yum. Yeah, and then really one of my good. students had an au pair from Brazil. And I was like, listen, bitch, I'm going to go buy some fucking meats and you're going to put it on a knife and <laughs> roast it over a thing and crust it in salt. And we're going to do this together. <laughs> I love it. That That is so funny. We ended up getting married in Brazil and then we ended up renting out this Airbnb farm type thing. And her brother brought 50 kilos of ribs and i was like how do you, you not think you how do you barbecue 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> he brought out all these buttholes, and <laughs> I asked for it, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> and and he, uh, he's just like okay slather it in oil and then just make salt snow on it it was more salty than your dirty martini probably just probably covered, covered. God, they, but they know how to eat oh love they it do. i love it oh man so good sorry okay, this is my adhd that took us down this track just so you know hey, i have a tendency <laughs> you know what it was a great meaty part that we could talk about so it was great so meaty and... meaty buttholes <laughs> <laughs> that could be the title of this episode meaty buttholes with joe Dembrus. i think <laughs> i think that's the most fitting it's, it's I love beautiful it. <laughs> <laughs> that was you need to write that into a set that was a good one. Oh, thank i actually i've uh i've I did. Before. You do. Good. I, good, I, good. I haven't done it. I haven't done it in a while. So I was like, man, I really hope you la- if you didn't laugh at it, I was going to cut it out forever. Oh. That was going to be. Oh, that was great. It was really great. <laughs> <It was> very <laughs> unexpected. I loved it. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm feeling almost all the way inspired. I have this quote here to get us to the tippy top to uh, get all that salt on our meat. And uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> This is actually by a robot. It's not by any person. It's called InspiroBot. And it was created using AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman uh, and put the words together. So much. (laughs) (laughs) If you go to InspiroBot.io, you just click and it'll generate a quote just like that. So uh, I did the hard work. I clicked. And Inspirebot gave me a quote, and this one it says, <clears throat> "Stand up for metaphorical arguments. Arguments is arguments, and that's it. That's all." <laughs> okay, I need you to know something about me. I fall down rabbit holes regularly. <laughs> okay, like good ones. Okay. When we're done here, I think I'm going to be on this website until showtime because <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> arguments is arguments, man. Uh, but, hey, you got to stand up for them. <laughs> and, and it is Especially it, Inspirebot, it, cha- it changes lives. So I feel like it changed oh. ours. I feel like I'm, I'm fully inspired now. My cup yeah, I, floweth. Oh, overfloweth. <laughs> it runneth full, even. <laughs> like, oh, I've got inspiration coming out the sides now. This is just oh, You've bonded amazing. on a level that is unreal <laughs> via the vessel that is Inspirobot. I this feel that Inspirobot should have us on the cover of the homepage <laughs> being like, Inspirobot, it brings people together. Yeah, I have to add. Does. For sure. <laughs> this is great. Awesome. All right. We're going to wind down with two questions. We've got the first one. It's from the Reddit advice column. So um, this stranger asks, how do I gain the trust of my girlfriend's cat? I don't see her very often, the cat, but maybe every other week at least. And every time that I'm there, she keeps her distance, but gives me the kissy eyes, as my girlfriend calls them, or slow blinks. Any tips, mm. any advice, thanks in advance. Um, first and foremost, I need everybody to know that I'm actually allergic to all forms of pussy. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how well I'm going to do here, but, but we can try. <laughs> uh, okay, so do you, ha- do you have any pets at all? Do you have dogs or any uh, ferrets? We are expecting a stork to deliver us a dog in december oh congratulations thank That's... you thank you do you know if it's a boy or a girl it's a boy his name is mac he was recently conceived and he's a golden retriever because that's america's oh. dog <laughs> oh my god yeah i love golden retrievers me Aww. too it's a soft spot a soft spot that's great that's great. So I, I asked about dogs, but I guess they're not like cats at all. And 
I don't know how to gain the trust of a cat besides with dogs. I guess you feed them. Aren't you not supposed to trust cats? Like, aren't they always never on your side? Like I read. Go ahead. Oh, no, I just I think I'm under. I think I read something one time that like if you die, your dog will die with you, but your cat will start to eat your body to survive. Because they're like, fuck this guy. That is exactly what I was about to say, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Dude, we are here. Oh, just, man, just together. I So I agree with you, and I think what you said is don't trust the cat ever. Don't trust any cat. They're out to get you. They will eat you eventually. Yes, oh, yes. Man. I, I just, also think, some reason- I think you should just give it, I think if he starts giving it catnip, it will start to recognize that, like, this being gives me um drugs so i like this person and then maybe the relationship will change (laughs) that's actually not bad advice by the way i think that actually would hold up in court i (laughs) i think it would be pretty good you you give it a taste and then it has to pay you start paying you because it's dependent, but with snuggles and and cuddles. Right. And then I don't know what happens when a cat gets catnip. I think, th- so I have two cats actually, mm-hmm. and, big reveal. And when I gave them catnip, they got very high and they started <laughs> rolling around like they were at Woodstock. In and the- rubbing their heads in it and stuff. Yes, yes. And I thought it was a great time. So they, I think they loved me a little bit more because of it. So I think See? this is a good piece of advice, Joe. I mean, who doesn't love a little buzz, right? Come on. Ex- hey, exactly. Exactly. I love it. Okay. And then, oh, and then what you can do is you can rub a little catnip on oh your body. Oh, my God. Body. Yes, yes, yes. You know what else, too? You could either get, like, super... Ooh. You can get super, um, what's it, like Pavlog with it. And you could like, uh-huh. when you give it the catnip, do a clicker. So it starts to associate the clicker with that sound. And then like put some on you. And then when it comes to the catnip, do the clicker when it gets there. So now the cat is even more so associating you with positivity. So then start when it comes by you without the catnip, do the clicker. And then eventually you won't need the clicker and it'll just like come by you and be nice. Honestly, I'm a fucking genius. (laughs) If we could just throw that out there, because it's true. I may have also watched a little too much Animal Planet. You you have a gift, Joe. I feel like <laughs> you're, you're you're almost like the cat whisperer now. Do we do I <laughs> something I do never we... thought I'd hear? <laughs> awesome. All right, we've got this last question. It is also from Reddit. It says, "Should I go to the movies?" alone i've passed through an emotional breakup slash rupture and want no contact with my ex some days ago and i keep thinking on her i wanted to go watch suicide squad but i don't feel the energy to invite someone but i also feel scared of feeling depressed and anxious seeing couples together or anything that reminds me of her thoughts so i am an extremely empathetic person And Mm -hmm. when I see people like eating by themselves in a restaurant, I like my heart always breaks. I'm like, should I just like go sit in the next chair? (laughs) And let's just like start talking about like, that's how I truly feel, which is also ironic because being a comic on tour, you're by yourself a lot in these situations. So if I saw him in the movie theater, I would also probably feel bad because I probably caught him masturbating if we're being real. (laughs) And, <laughs> yes. and like you don't want to make a scene because you don't want him to feel bad so you're like do I look away or does he like want to be seen like what am I doing so I I would probably advise him like just Netflix it oh <clears throat> there you go that's a good and idea I, my advice is better when it's animal oriented what do you think I, I was just gonna stick to the catnip, just uh, catnip yeah. the seeds. But yeah, give him get, take take some catnip. Have you had catnip? Um, but no, I think I think if you pick the right movie, 
you might be able to go and see it and it doesn't remind you of the X. And I've never seen a movie alone except for one time I got in a fight with my wife and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go cool off. And I saw Bad Grandpa with Robert De Niro and Zac Efron. And it made me even even a worse mood, to be honest with you. I was like, this movie is horrible. And I walked out. I walked out. So I don't know if this is the best thing for you, man. Maybe you shouldn't I go watch a movie. I don't think so either. Yeah, I, it, it's refrain. Refrain. Yeah. Take up a hobby. Something active, I think, is what he needs. I like that. I was going to say get a cat if you're not allergic. That would push. Yeah, if you're not, I think you could. He, he did say <laughs> he did say girlfriend, so he's at least oh, only not allergic to half of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, one lip of the genus is uh, he's good. Emphasis <laughs> <That's> on lip. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well i think our lips have given some great advice so joe it is time to close the lips and end the podcast but thank you so much for for talking with me chatting about yourself giving some great advice and coming on the podcast oh god thanks for having me this is fun this was very fun oh good and i also wanted to ask where can people find you what have you got going on um and what would you like to plug Oh, for sure. You can listen to the Social Studies podcast. It comes out every Monday. My other episode of the podcast, Let's Watch TV, where I watch mind-running television with my mom, comes out every Wednesday. You can find those wherever you get your podcasts. I'm also on tour right now. Come see me. My whole tour schedule, 46 cities, is on my website, mrdtimes3.com, which also happens to be my social media handle everywhere that you consume social media, Mr. D Times 3. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to pause this podcast right now. You're going to go find those things. You're going to follow. You're going to subscribe. If you're feeling nasty, you're going to leave a review. Okay. <laughs> then you're going to come back. You're going to finish the rest of this podcast. And you're going to listen to three more episodes of guests that you're into. And you're going to be a full supporter of comedy in real life. Why? <laughs> because you believe in life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In Jesus' name I pray. That is a reading from the book of Dean. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> this is why, Joe, you are so much better than I am. Because I was just going to be like, you know, the links are going to be in the show notes. So go on over there and blah, blah, blah. But you made it fun. You made it lively. You just, you, oh God, it's like you and, got oh, to I gotta give. I got to give one more bit of advice before we end. Do you have, I, I'm guessing you have a lot of comics who listen to the podcast who really like the inside baseball talk. Yes, yes. Okay, which I am so into. This is what I'm going to say, too. You know how many times I have a comic come up to me? They're like, oh, I headlined tonight, and I only sold, like, a third of the house or whatever. And I go on their social. I'm like, bitch, you didn't plug. You didn't plug your shit. Why are you not hustling? If you don't talk about your mm. shows, you, they're not going to sell. People don't just think, oh, I bet this person's on tonight. Let me drive to the club and take a chance. Plug your shit. And also, don't be embarrassed to plug your shit. Because a lot of comics are like, oh, I don't want to like be like that. I don't want my feed to be all like me plugging. If you are not advocating for you, who is? Nobody cares. Nobody wants you to succeed more than yourself. So plug your shit, sell your tickets, make your money, and keep grinding. And I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, Joe, I feel, I know, and maybe it was because I was looking into those piercing eyes as you were, you were speaking into my soul. I have my first show that I am going to be doing. It's, a, it's kind of stand up, but it's, uh, it's at a comedy club on a Wednesday night. It's going to be September 8th, everybody. And it's called Trash or Treasure, where we're going to have a tournament style Two comedians against each other. You ha They have to pick the stance of trash or treasure. And I, myself, and my co-host, Lamar, we're going to give them a topic like pineapple on pizza, trash or treasure. And they have to convince the audience where the audience is going to make the final decision. There's going to be a trap door. So the one that loses does um, fall down 30 feet. But yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. It's going to be Where's great. Where's it at? It's at the House of Comedy. I love the House of Comedy. I love the Bronsons. Tammy Bronson, that's my babe. That's my boo. I want to be Tammy Bronson when I'm older. I just want to oh. grow up and live a fabulous life like her. Whenever I play her clubs, <laughs> she always has a beer with me. And I love that. Oh, um, that's so cool. 
And for people who are going to the show, you just need to know that it's in 100% in Italian. So hopefully you can keep up. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. I almost <laughs> forgot. forgot to say. Si, sí, questo We're spettacolo trash or treasure. Okay, Vai, le I am mezza. fully erect now. So <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> I'm glad I can use it for somebody's pleasure because my wife is like, could you just learn French, please? And I'm like, <laughs> I love it. God. Oh, for real. Uh, Thank you for having me. This has been awesome. I really appreciate it being on. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. What a tasty episode with Joe. Wasn't he amazing? I told you. I, I Does daddy lie to you? No. Daddy tells the truth. Okay. And I really hope you enjoyed. You've made it all the way till the end. And you're listening to this mellifluous voice. So I hope you enjoyed it or you're just an extreme masochist. But if you want more, if you, you want another taste, if you want to come back to the restaurant and get the chef special all over again, just make sure that you're staying abreast of all things, Joe Dombrowski. Links are in the show notes. Go see him live. Listen to his podcast, all that good stuff. And then uh, me, don't forget about little me, the sous chef. Or maybe I'm the owner of the restaurant and Joe is the, the star chef. I don't know. But either way, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. See me live September 8th. Link is in the show notes for the tickets for Trash or Treasure. And follow me on the gram. And that's it. And then also just give yourself some love. Okay, don't forget from me, hug yourself, caress yourself. And right now, close your eyes, give yourself a big hug, pretend it's me. And then I'm going to whisper something. Hey, nice hair. Doesn't matter if you just got it cut or if it's been growing for a year. It looks nice. Yeah, the sniff was a little creepy. Sorry about that. But just cancel that out and then the rest of it will still apply, okay? All right, guys. Leaving it right there. Big old hug and a gooch smooch. Mwah, mwah, mwah.